All right, basic JavaScript comparison with the strict inequality operator. The strict inequality operator um, is the logical opposite of the strict equality operator. It means strictly not equal and returns false, where strict equality would return true and vice versa. Strict inequality will not convert data types. <clears throat> For example, three strictly um, three strictly does not equal three. That's false. Three strictly does not equal a string of three. That's true. Four strictly does not equal three. It is and that's also true. All right, so add the strict inequality operator to the if statement. So the function will return not equal when val is strictly not equal to 17. So we're gonna go right here. Come on, dude. All right. Strictly is not equal 17. Put it in the wrong spot. I think you had it right, John. Yeah. I think it I think it's at the bottom, the semicolon in between the parentheses. Needs to be. Yeah, in the console log. Yeah. The semicolon closes, yeah, mm, after okay. the console log. Maybe later. JavaScript comparison with the greater than operator. Um, the greater than operator uh, greater than, compares the values of two numbers. Uh, if the value of the left is greater than the number to the right, uh, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false, like the equality operator greater than operator will convert data types of values while comparing. Um, <clears throat> add the greater than operator to the indicated lines so that the return statements make sense. Okay. So Comparison with the greater than or equal to operator. The greater than or equal to operator, um, greater than or equal to, compares the values of two numbers. 
if the number to the left is greater than or equal to the number on the right, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. <laughs> like the um, inequality. Um, if, um, all right, so like the inequality operator, uh, greater than um, or equal to, like the inequality operator, greater than or equal to operator will convert data types while comparing. Okay, so let's see, add the greater than or equal to operator so that the return statements make sense. So we have the return statements. It says return less than 10. And then it says return 10 or above. So we want it to make sense. So we're going to do the value is greater than or equal to 10. And then up here it says 20. Uh, return 20 or over. So value for this will be greater than or equal to 20. Comparison with the less than uh, operator. Uh, the less than operator uh, compares values of two numbers. If the number to the left is less than the number to the right, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Um, like the inequality operator, less than operator can um, less than converge data types while comparing. Uh, so, for example, two uh, less than five is true. Three, uh, the string of three less than seven is true. Five uh, less is less than five is false. Three less than two is false. Uh, eight, the string of eight is less than eight, uh, four is false. Um, so add the less than operator to the indicated lines so the return statements make sense. So we're gonna add Says the return value should be under 25. So, less than or value. Comparison with the less than or equal to operator. Less than or equal to operator, uh, less than or equal to, it compares the values of two numbers. If the number to the left is less than or equal to the number to the right, it returns true. Um, if the number to the left is greater than the number to the right, it returns false. Um, like, the, like the equality, uh, operator less than or equal to converts data types. Uh, for example, Four is less than or equal to five. That's true. So the string of seven is less than or equal to seven. It's also true. Five is less than or equal to five is true. And three is less than or equal to two is false. Eight, string of eight is less than or equal to four is false. All right, so add the less than or equal to operator to the indicated lines so that the return statements make sense. So it says smaller than or equal to 12. And on the next line, or the next vowel, we're going to add.
Oh, no, no, 24, excuse me. Um, comparisons with logical and operator. Sometimes you will need to test more than one thing at a time. The logical and operator uh, returns, or excuse me, the logical and operator, which is uh, the and and sign, returns true if and only if operands to the left and right of it are true. The same effect could be achieved by um, nesting an element, or excuse me, by nesting a statement inside another if. So for example, if number uh, is greater than five, if number is less than 10, return yes. Um, and then we have below that, we have return no. So we'll only return yes, if num is greater than five and less than 10. Um, the same logic can be written as if num is less than five, um, logical and operator num um, is less than 10, uh, return yes. Um, below that we have uh, return no. Okay, so combine the two if statements into one statement, which will return yes, thou, uh, excuse me, which will return yes if thou is less than or equal to 50 and greater than or equal to 25. Otherwise, we'll return no. Are you having trouble with this one? Um, no, I'm just rewriting it. Like oh, okay. Less than or equal to 50 and greater than or equal to 25. Otherwise, we'll return no. Greater than or equal to 25. Oh, is 
greater than or equal to 50. Outside, it like goes out. In the in your if statement, you need to put val after the operator. I mean, after the and operator. Oh. Okay. You also have two no two of the return nos. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Because technically, in that scenario, you weren't comparing the number 25 to anything. Since the vowel wasn't there, it was just and greater than or equal to 25, so the computer didn't know what to do. That's right, if there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. okay. Comparisons with uh, logical or operator. Logical or operator um, returns true if either of the operands is true. Otherwise, it returns false. <clears throat> Logical or operator is composed of two pipe symbols. This can typically be found between your backspace and enter keys. The pattern below should look familiar from prior waypoints. Okay. The pattern below should look familiar to from waypoints. And then in the example we have if num is greater than 10, return no. Um, uh, and if num is less than five, return no. Uh, and then we have return yes. We'll return yes only if num is between 5 and 50. Or excuse me, 5 and 10. 5 and 10 included. The same logic can be written as if num is greater than 10 um, logical operand. Excuse me, logical or operator. Pink Pink um, if num is greater than ten, logical operator, num is less than five. Or excuse me, num less than five. Return no. Uh, Yes. So combine the two if statements into one statement, which returns outside if val is not between 10 and 20. Inclusive, otherwise return inside. So we have return inside down there. So I'm just going to put... Get pumpkin. Put him in the cage. Um, grab the, the litter box. No, it's not between 10 and 20. Okay. Kingston. Yes. Turn on the light. That's nuts. Yes, only if none is between five and ten. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So then we're going to have ten and twenty. So it's less than twenty. No. Yeah, less than twenty. 
and greater than 10. So val should be greater. So val is, no, that's wrong. Val is greater than 10. Grab the, the litter box, grab it out. Um, there's a trash can right there. So then 20 one right is one greater than val. I need you to cover your nose because if you dump it, it's all gonna like come up in your face. So either grab a <laughs> and cover your mouth and your nose. Oh, I should only have one F standing. Um, let's see, Val is greater than 10, and 20 is greater than Val. I think if you want Val less than 10, right? Yeah, Val should be, no, Val should be, um, uh, between 10 and 20. Combine the two if statements into one statement, one for 10. Side if val is not between 10 and 20, inclusive. Otherwise, return inside. So if it's less than 10 or greater than 20, it should return outside. Mm -hmm. So less than, oh, so I have it greater than 10. You dump it. Now we'll grab it. You still have value to be less than twenty. Take the vacuum in there first. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> not stepping on the. Look at what I just did. Val should be val. All right, so I have if val is less than. 10. Um, or if value is greater than 20. Value is greater than 20. I can't do that one. Switch that around. Like That's why I said grab the vacuum. No, 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 it's not that. It's just like that one's windows. Grab that one's windows. Crystal, I'm not sure if you know, but your mic's on. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yelling at my kid, my bad. No, it's fine. I just wasn't sure if you wanted <laughs> us to hear that. <laughs> if you guys don't mind, but yeah. No worries, dude. Um, introducing elf statements. At least you're not mean. You're not like hitting him with a broom and stuff. Like, go to your room, wet! <laughs> you're a nice mom. <laughs> How long have you guys been listening to me yell at him? Uh, since the beginning. Shit. <laughs> okay, dude. Um, introducing else statements. Condition for an if statement is true. The block of code following. Is, uh, Crystal, are you are you up with us? Huh? Are you with us? On this else statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. All right, cool. I'm working and yelling all at the same time. <laughs> a true woman there, I tell you. <laughs> That's what I call multitasking. When a condition for an if statement is true, the block of the code following it is executed. What about when a condition is false? Normally, nothing would happen. What, with an else statement, an alternative block of code can be executed. Let me read that again. When a condition for an if statement is true, the block of code following it is executed. What about when the condition is false? Normally nothing would happen. When, with an else statement, an alternative block of code can be executed. So, if num is greater than 10, return bigger than 10. Else return 10 less, or excuse me, return 10 or less. Combine if statements into a single if else statement. Okay.
Let's change this value to test. Okay. What's that uh, result? Where's that? Uh, result, return result. Um, oh, that's okay. just an empty string that's declared at the beginning of the function. If you notice, uh, like I'll, I'll reset all this right quick. If you notice, like you see, like I think what that does is it's like, like that right there, it's like we, we have result right here. But since we're making an if else statement, like we're changing it from result to return. No. Well, you're supposed no? to, no, you're supposed to like, you're, you're essentially using result as a placeholder, right? At the beginning. So whatever you're going to do, you're going to add to the result. That way um, you, you're not returning the, those, the string, you're just returning result. Uh, that's what you're, so, so results, what's, uh, so like if foul is greater than five, results should equal bigger than five. And then at the bottom is result. It's, it, yeah, I'll let someone else explain. <laughs> so when you start the function, result starts as a blank string. And then mm -hmm. you look, it first looks if value is higher than five. If it is, then it changes result, the, the variable result to equal bigger than five. And then the if statement finishes, and then the function returns result, which is saved as the string bigger than five. But if it's not bigger than five, result saves as five or smaller, and then it returns it. Because if you don't return something, then nothing that happens inside the function can be used outside of the function. You understand that, Crystal? Basically, we're just updating what result equals by checking if it's bigger or less than. And then at the very end of it, we have to return something so it can be used outside of the function. And so we're returning what result is after it checks whether it's greater than or equal than. Okay, okay. Get that. I'm gonna try and test this code. Let's see. What so the reason it's not working is because you're trying to return instead of saving it as a result. Because once you hit that return, the first return it hits, it ends the function. That's it. Nothing, nothing else will happen below when it hits that return. So if the value is greater than or, or you know, whatever, either one, um, the immediately the function immediately stops running. Okay. That's weird. Why do they have return right here then? That's just an if statement. It's not a. Oh. It's not like a function. But you still need to set result equal. Right now you just have result bigger than five, but you need to assign it. So you need to use the equal sign. Should it be smaller than five or five or smaller. I don't remember what the original string text was. Just capitalize your S and smaller. Oh, you add it. Oh. 
the small things, man. It's the small it's spelling errors. There, you'll think you're an idiot. You'll think I, I'll think I'm an idiot because of a lowercase. So I think the whole thing's wrong. Yeah, you know, we gotta just get a new one. Oh, dude, you were supposed to just uh, uppercase at us, man. Capitalize it. Capitalize, baby. All right, so introducing else if statements. Okay. If you have multiple conditions that need to be addressed, you can chain if statements together with else if statements. So if num is greater than 15, return bigger than 15. Uh, else if num is less than five, then we have return smaller than five. Else return between five and 15. Okay. I don't like how they don't keep this consistent. The last one we used result and this time and the next one it doesn't use it. It's a good thing you're noticing that. What's up? That's a good thing you noticed that. I think I'm doing this the right way. It's like, like honestly, like what I'm doing is like I'm looking at this and then I'm trying to make this look like that. I don't think yeah, that's, that's pretty much what you need to do. Okay, that's what I need to do. All right, I, like I felt like I was like cheating myself a little bit. Yeah, you need to turn the second if into an else if. Because you have two conditions. Like, oh, I'm yeah, working on that one. Logic to use if else. I have my if. So right now you're still using result, but we're not using result in this uh, problem. We're doing returns instead. I thought we weren't supposed to use return though. We do. It essentially does the same thing. That's what I was saying. It doesn't really keep these problems consistent, so it's a little confusing. Yeah. But right now we're doing result or return instead of result. How do you know when to use which one? <clears throat> the return wrote. just like pops something, like pops a value out of the function. Mm -hmm. And before result was a variable, and we returned the variable at the end of the function. So it's essentially doing the same thing, but just like a little different syntax. 
Yeah, right, return. Think... You're always going to return something out of a function. Usually, result uh, was I... just a was just a variable. I didn't know you were this smart, Pat. I really didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know this. Was, this was what JavaScript was, Doug. <laughs> I think you have an extra ending parentheses. No, you do. You're good. Wait. No, you need an extra. At the very end, you need another bracket. So I don't think there's oh, yeah. a closing bracket for the function. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. There you go. It looks a little weird because your spacing's a little messed up, but that should work. Wait, mine didn't go through. I think I missed something here. Uh, share your code. Wait, I think I got it. Hold on. No, never mind. Oh, you got it? Oh, no, no, no. All right. Uh, oh, dude, that bracket pair color thing is beautiful, dude. Like are it. you using it now? Yeah, it looks cool. All right, let's see. So these three. Should return between five and ten. She's gonna need no. another thing. Yeah. No, I you did it. <laughs> <laughs> All by yourself. Yeah, thanks. I there go. It's just, I wasn't paying attention. No, a lot of times in uh, programming, there's like the rubber duck, and it's like this thing where you just get a rubber duck and you talk to it about your problem. And you end up like solving your problem yourself. Yeah. I've read like a lot of stories about developers, how they have like a rubber duck or some kind of inanimate object on their desk. And whenever they have like a problem, they'll just like start explaining the problem to the object. And then they just like, they're like, oh shit, that's what I was supposed to do. Yeah, Mr. Duck, so. <laughs> I wish I could have had my son just be my duck, but he wouldn't listen to me anyway, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch it over. Yeah, you want? Yeah, hold on. Oh, I thought you were going to read it. You wanted to keep reading? Okay. Oh, oh, you wanted me to stay on? Oh. That's what I was asking. Yeah, I'll read it. It's probably yeah. the best way to just keep me going. I feel, <laughs> I feel like a total, like a total, I don't know. I don't want to say Scrooge, but. No, Scrooge, don't say that. Brother. that I got you guys here, man, because Scrooge's little brother needs you. All right, so basic JavaScript, logical order, and if else statements, okay? So order is important, and if else, excuse me, order is important, and if else if statements. The function is executed from top to bottom, so you will want to be careful of what statement comes first. Take these two fractions, or excuse me, take these two functions <clears throat> as an example. Here's the first. You guys remember this, uh, here's the first. Take, 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 I'm sorry guys. I messed myself up here a little bit. So take these two functions as an example. Here's the first, right? Function foo x, if x is less than, one, I'm a genius, return less than one, else if x is less than two, return less than two, else return greater than or equal to two. And the second just switches the order of the statement. Function bar x, if x is less than two, return less than two, else if x less than one, return less than one, else return greater than or equal to two. 
While these two functions look nearly identical, if we pass a number to both, we get different outputs. Foo zero, less than one. Bar zero, less than two. Change the order of logic and the function so that we'll return the correct statements in all cases. Got it. I think the best way to explain this concept is to like think about it in terms of examples. Mm -hmm. So if you compare the number two first, first it's going to compare two if two is less than 10. If it's less than 10, it'll print less than 10 and it'll, it'll just end the function. So it won't compare if it's less than five, but mm -hmm. less than five is like a closer thing. So you want to put less than five at the top. Because it always compares from the top down, or does it from the top down, I mean? Oh, okay, so we're changing the order. Left. Yeah. Let's get it, son. Let's get it. <laughs> JavaScript, I love you, JavaScript. Because the way it's written right now, if you put two in, it'd give you less than 10, but you want it to return less than five. All right. Okay. I see what you're saying. All right. Um, let me take a look at these right quick. Just want to get a quick uh, preview. So they look identical, don't they? So, boom. 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 Uh, so we'll put if we return nothing else we return we have else return all right so we have one we have x less than x is less than one we have x is less than two and we have else so we have x is less than two oh, okay so all we're doing is changing the order so this is an easy one so I'm going to switch you up with you. No, let me switch and take you out of here. And you're going, where you going? So about, oh, there you are. That's the if. So I'm switching the if. I wonder why, why isn't there an else right here? Is that because it's start? All right, so I'm going to switch this if with that if. Yeah, there's an else at the end. Oh, okay. So it's the same exact thing as the example. This value is less than 10. I want to switch it up with. Yeah, because I'm just copying and I actually put how it's supposed to be. So put it else right there.
Oh, you almost had it that last time. Yeah. I feel like it should be so simple. I feel like all I have to do is like switch this with this. All you have to do is change the numbers. Just write five, five, and then change the bottom ones to 10, 10. You don't have to actually like cut and paste stuff. And then, yeah, just change that to 10. And then just change the numbers in the top one to five. I mean, you can cut and paste it, but then you have to rearrange it some. Why on this one, um, on the example side of it, the numbers are spelt out and on the part that we're working on, it's not, it's actual numbers. Does that uh, seem like that made a I, difference? Can I see it? I, I forgot what it said. <clears throat> Oh, just the, the example site? Oh, okay, hold on. Um, right here? See how it yeah. says it's spelled out? Oh, so that, that's just what you want to, like, in, like you, what you want to tell everybody. So you see it's in a string. So the string is just like a sentence that you're telling everyone. So you could change that to numbers too, or like you could write it out instead of writing the let the number 10 and it still work. I think mine didn't work. Uh, it's probably just because of how they could, they, they probably yeah, have certain parameters. Test. Yeah. Yeah. You probably have to get it like exactly to what they writ that wrote that it needs to be, but like in proper JavaScript, that would work. Oh, okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. I didn't know if that is something that would need it. No. No, you could write anything in there and it would work in real JavaScript. You could write like, there are 10 monkeys in the bed and it'd work. <laughs> Were they jumping? <laughs> Did <I> Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> yeah, I think Free Code Camp, they have like a bunch of like set answers that you have to like code exactly right for it to pass. Okay, got it. Cause yeah, I I switched it on my end and it just wasn't running. So I switched it back and it, it went through fine. I want to check on my, on my HTML guys, man. See what they're up to. I can't check on them though. They're in Zoom. All right, anyways. <clears throat> Chaining if else statements. If else statements can be chained together for complex logic. Here is pseudocode to multiply chain if else Here is pseudocode of multiple chained if statement. If conditional one statement one, else if conditional two statement two, if conditional three statement three. Dot dot dot. Else statement n. Right chained if statements to fulfill the, con the following conditions. Num is less than five, return tiny. Num is less than 10, return small. Num is less than 15, return medium. Num is less than 20, return large. Num is greater than 20, return huge. So, I'm gonna chain this together. So we have function test size num. We're gonna change the code below this line. Then we have return change me. Then it says change the value test, test seven. Test size seven. Okay, we change code above this line. Okay. So, let's see. Let's try this out. Right, 
this out. Okay. And we have else if. So if num is less than five, turn tiny. Statement one. So that's not a full statement, I don't believe. I think it should like say return. Sure though. You also need the curly brackets after the condition. I didn't need to get out of the top. Oh, I see. Okay. So tiny. That's the statement. Yep, just make it a return statement to the string tiny. You don't need the equals, just return. When when does that um, equal sign come into play? Like, when do you know when to use an equal and not? The equal sign is only for when you're assigning uh, some kind of data to a variable. So you only need to use it if you're if you have a variable and you need to assign it a cert, certain data. Uh, so we're not assigning that; we're just returning that. Yeah. I see. Oh, okay. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. And then what's the uh, what's the synonym to return? What do you mean? Result. They're synonymous, aren't they? They mean like the same thing. Can't they be used like interchangeably? With what? Like Return. result. And result. No, result, result. Result's not a JavaScript. It's not a real thing. Yeah. Result was a variable that we used before. Uh, Return okay. is the, the main keyword. Okay. Okay. Yeah, result was a variable inside of our function, and then we returned result at the very end.
Why are you putting dot dot dots? Uh, I have no idea. They have them right here. Uh, I think that they're just saying like they. It's just it's supposed to represent like other code. Oh. Maybe I don't know. Like etc. Kind of. You can't have two else's. Yeah, there you go. And you need semicolons after your return statements. Oh, I actually have to complete the return statements. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of those are missing too. <clears throat> Is it not working still? On line 16. Oh, for, for an else statement, you don't include a condition. Else statements are what happens if none of the above conditions are met. So you have to take out the num is greater than or equal to 20. Because whenever you do an else, it's just like, kind of like a catch-all. Anything that you're above conditions don't catch, then else gets the rest of them. I was about to get on and say that mine wasn't working, but I had, um, I had that there after the else. Yeah, for else's, it's always just else and then run code. You don't do else parentheses a condition. Else is just a catch, like a catch everything else. So is, huge, like, is huge the, is that the, uh, is, it, is this statement the last statement? Is this the else? Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah, that's the else one. So you don't need the entire if stuff there. You don't need the parentheses. Because right now your conditions is if num is less than five, if num is less than 10, if num is less than 15, if num is less than 20. And then after that, else is saying if it's not one of the like above conditions, then it's huge. So yeah, you just get rid of it. You don't. You don't need yeah. Either. You don't need the num is greater than equal to twenty. Because you don't that know that it's greater. That condition is going to already be met if none of the other ones are met. Yeah. If you look in the example, you can see because after each of the if and else if. Uh, oh, statements yeah. they have a condition, but the else doesn't. True. It just goes straight condition? to the statement. Why do they have that right there then? See if you get caught up. I guess it's gonna confuse you maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean know. logically <laughs> logically it's right, but you don't need to put it in the code. Okay. Yeah. Well, as long as it's logically right. Oh, I remember I had a little bit of trouble with when I did this one because I didn't understand golf. <laughs> yeah, trying to like, figure out. Hell? <laughs> golf code. In the game of golf, each hole has a par. Uh, meaning, this is actual, this is like real. Like the, the golf, the par, the strokes. These are real computer code? Mm, no. no. No, that's just uh, how you calculate uh, your golf. score in golf. Okay. Oh, okay. All they're right. just using that. They're just using that as an example. So are they this. variables? Yeah, they're just, yeah. yeah, yeah they're placeholder variables. variables. All right. Well, the arguments and uh, the golf score function. All right. In the game of golf, each hole has a par. Uh, has a par, meaning the average number of strokes a golfer is expected to make in order to sink the ball in a hole to complete the play, depending on how far above or below your <clears throat> par your strokes are there's a different nickname your function will be passed par and strokes arguments 
return the correct string according to this table, which lists the strokes in order of priority, top, highest, to bottom, lowest. Okay. Hardest strokes will always be numeric and positive. We have added an array of all the names for your convenience. So we have vars, var names, some variable names. We have home one, eagle, berry, par. Look, okay. So these are a bunch of arrays, right? So we got a bunch of arrays. No, it's one array. It's oh, we have one array. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So we have one array with a bunch of strings in it. With a bunch of strings in it. Okay. You know, when I did this one, I didn't even notice that array up there. I like typed them all out. <laughs> I just realized that as well. Honestly, yeah, I think I did too. <laughs> Instead of just accessing the array. Yeah, I was like, oh man. <laughs> but yeah, so this one is basically, it's going to be the same setup as the last one, except obviously different uh, conditions and statements. But you're gonna just gonna be chaining if and else if statements until you finally get to the else statement. Okay. So it's only three of them, right? Now you need them for each. Uh, it, over there in the chart, you need a condition oh. for each one. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to start with an if statement and then have a bunch of else ifs and then close it off with an else. Personally, I feel like it's easier to work through one uh, condition at a time than trying to set it all up at once. Same. But either one, either way, it doesn't matter. I hear you. Yeah, it makes sense, get, get confusing of which brackets go to which and all that. Okay. Let me try it out then. Don't type it out, John. Uh, you can no. just do the yeah. bracket, notation. bracket notation, yeah, to access the array, uh, what's inside the array. So you could just put names and then zero in brackets, but, but not, not a in a string, sorry. Yeah. There you go. But what is the one in your parentheses? What is that? Um, strokes. How does it? How does the function know that is strokes? Right now, it doesn't. Let's create a variable. You don't have to create one. They already have an argument. Yeah, because look, oh, they do. look at the arguments. Yeah. Is so you just want to like the scores. There you go. Yeah, if you uh. Scroll down, you'll see when whenever you call the function, you have to put in two numbers, the par and strokes. Mm -hmm. And then it compares the strokes to the par. And depending on the difference between them, you're, it's going to return hole in one, eagle, birdie, par, bogey, double bogey, or go home. So why would I, instead of, instead of just strokes, why wouldn't I put in golf score and then strokes in, a, in a parentheses? 
There is no golf score. No, because you're within the golf score function. You're not going to call golf score within oh, golf score. Okay. Okay. You are just dealing with the arguments. All right. All right. That makes sense. I like it. So right now you have the first statement completely done, and now you can move on to the next one. So, John, to clean up your code a little bit, mm -hmm. after your first bracket, hit enter on that second line. No, 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 go back. No, 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 no. That's closing bracket. Put a space in there. Now go over to your opening bracket of your function or your else if. Mm -hmm. Go to the opening curly bracket, bracket to the right. No, 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 the curly bracket. Oh, okay. Yeah, hit enter. There you go. Um, so, uh, less than equals power minus, so it's really golf score, and then it's, and then the argument is, no, no, yeah, is it? So it's like golf score less than equals power minus two. That's, no. No? Okay. Golf score is the name of the function. Mm -hmm. It's the, not an argument. Yeah. The stuff inside the parentheses, so par and strokes are the actual arguments, which will be used inside of the function. Because okay. what they want you to do is compare strokes, the number of strokes to the par, and then return a different string depending on the difference between strokes and par. So you're not done with that one yet. You got to fix that one first. Look at your condition. Uh, what what are you comparing the par minus two to? Yeah, what needs to be less than par minus two in order for that if statement to run? I really don't know. One? Strokes. Strokes. Oh, freak, dude. Yeah, so if strokes is less than or equal to par minus two, then th then you want to return names one, which is eagle. Hmm. Yeah. Got, it. Got it. But you got to put return in there. Names one won't do anything. There you go. No more help. No more help. I think I got it from here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to dip out anyways because it's getting late for me. So, um, yeah, dude, it's 1130, man. Yeah. I'm going to make you host, John. All right, dude. I'll catch y'all Sunday or Monday. <laughs> All right, hey, man. Good, Good Saturday, man. All right, later. Later, dude. Yeah, man, no more help for here. You guys answered the entire thing already for me, man. Let me get the rest of this. I think I got it. I see. I can't wait till I get to the point where freaking it's like I just completely understand this dude. I'm able to just do what you guys are doing, dog. Yeah, it's just repetition. You're doing lots of examples.
Yo, Pat's like, all right, son, you got it, man. All right, I'm out, bro. I got you, bro. I got you there. All right, cool. Peace. <laughs> it's late as shoot, too, man. I know it's late. I'm surprised you even stayed this long. Usually you dish out at like 11. Um, That's my goal, man. I, I like. I seriously want to get Pat a freaking job, bro. That's like totally my goal, right there, man. In your second else if statement, make sure you're using the equivalent operator and not the assignment operator. The equivalent and not the assignment. Yeah. So right now you're saying strokes. You're you're uh, assigning par minus one equal to strokes instead of comparing if oh. strokes is equal to par minus one you see the difference yeah hey i gotta head out as well all right dude have a good night man i'll see you yeah, on a sunday going. we have no school yeah I'll catch you guys later yeah dude all right um So we're going to um, oh I'll, yeah. Also in your if statement, you see how you only use one equal sign instead of two. Um yeah. That's technically incorrect because right, you're saying strokes is equal. You're assigning strokes the value of one, and you're not asking if strokes is equal to one. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I get what you're saying. I'm okay. trying to figure out how to find the answer, though. I'm trying to figure out an answer. I'm not sure. So you just want to have strokes as equal to one instead of uh, assigning it. So you want to have two equal signs instead of one. Because with two that you're using the equivalent operator instead of the assignment operator. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go back over all this tonight, man. We're gonna end at twelve, and uh, whoever wants to stay, man, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna start from the beginning of this, and I'm actually gonna go through every challenge again. And I'm like gonna just write out the definitions. Yeah, that's all it takes is just a little practice and then you'll be flying through it. <laughs> I do because I don't like being like the guy that like doesn't even know what the freak that, you know, like I'm, I, I can't even tell you what the name of it is. And we just went through it. It's like the, I know it's equivalency of something, but it's. it's yeah, well, it, it's I, I understand. It's kind of hard to get it through your since the, especially this if this is your first time seeing all this. Yeah. It's a lot of new information to try to remember after seeing it only once. <laughs> it's pretty hard to remember so much information after only doing it one time. So you just want to do the same thing there. And, yep. So it's the same thing throughout all of them, eh? Yep. Whenever you're using if or else if statements, you're always, you always want to use uh, uh, comparing operands. Okay. That's, a, that's a mistake I've made a, a bunch is I'll only have one equal sign and then I'll be like, why isn't my function working? And then I realize it's not trying to do the correct thing. So on uh, with par minus one, and then we have par.
Hey, Jonathan, I've also noticed the, with this scenario, with this else have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I started out, I can, I mean, you're, you're obviously doing something now, but for like future reference, um, if I see that I'm doing like multiple if else ifs, I build them out, right? So um, like if we're going to the left here with strokes, if strokes is one, so I do if, else if, like I basically build out the else ifs uh, first yeah. and then, you know, like do it now, but I know that's later. So you're doing your thing. I just, for, if you run into the scenario again, we got to do yeah, a bunch. And then you just be able to like copy and paste them all the way down, right? You, you, yeah. So you, you set up like the if and the parentheses and the else ifs. And so you basically have like all the, the like conditionals that you're going to need. And then that way you're just focusing on, you know, whatever those uh -huh. each one of them individually. That makes sense. Future. Also, Crystal, are you doing good on this one? I think so. I'm flying through it, dude. That's... I have so much to go back on, though. Hmm? Because when I, when I, uh, because my stuff didn't save yesterday, you remember? And I had to go under my new or my account to. Oh, you got to redo the exercises. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I kind of. Hey, if you want, I'll go over them with you. Okay. After 12. Because I got to go through the definitions yeah. anyway, and I'll just take notes while you're doing them. Like, I'll do them with you, and we can just take, I'll take notes, and I'll send you the notes at the end. Oh, man. Yeah, I can help out, too, because I've been, I've been redoing the uh, MDM project, trying to, like, update it with some stuff. So what I MDM? still need all, all of this. The project you went through. So um, I converted uh, all the functions to EOS. I did a bunch of stuff and decided like built on it. So I threw it in a code pen and I'll send it to you. Guys oh, neat, dude. Check it out. Right on. Let's see. Something's off right here. I think. I know. Yeah, because you have an extra, right? Yeah, that bracket. All right, guys, I got to walk the dog, and I'm going to head off for the night. Yeah, dude, you, you have a good night, man. You guys have a good one. I'll see you uh, Sunday. Sunday. See you Sunday. Good work today, man. I got to check and see how my stallions are doing, man. I wonder if they're still working. Those guys were stoked. I got a supposed stroke, right? Those guys were stoked, man. Uh, actually, one dude. <laughs> it's crazy. I got a dude in there from China. He was the only dude that, he was the first dude that showed up today. And then uh, the other dude, who, uh, he showed up too. Um, so I was so happy when I saw the other dude show up because, you know, it just meant that he wasn't alone, man. And, you know, it was reliable and stuff. Uh, so they're going over that. And they're making uh, the YouTube videos for uh, the HTML of Mozilla because they finished up... Uh, 
They finished up the HTML free code camp already. So the CSS, they finished the CSS basics, but I told them, I was like, yo, listen, just go ahead and do this HTML stuff and uh, get that done to, on MDM. You know, I want them to be able to make tables and stuff and be able to like make HTML emails. <clears throat> it's always a good start. Huh? I wish I, I wish I kind of did more email stuff because I ended up doing that at my last job and that like made me feel a lot more confident in like HTML and CSS. Right. So it's like, I feel like if, if like they're going to go through like a, a, a free code camp is great, but I feel like it's a little too short on, a, you know, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. No, it, I mean, it's the same thing as like Code Academy, right? Like Code Academy is cool and all, like it helps you get a start, right? But that's not, like you don't become a, like you're not a, you don't feel as a confident once you start running into other scenarios. Right. So, yeah, that's all. Yeah, it happens. That's why I'm happy that, uh, that Mozilla's got it how it's got it, man. We got all that extra, that extra right here. But they make it like kind of like they make it super friendly, dude. That's what's nice about it. It's like, you know, at least for people that aren't afraid to read. Right.
sessions. I forgot, I Ope had a freaking, I think I Ope had a, a, a domain name too. I had to buy him a domain name. I told everybody that joins the learning group. I was like, yeah, if we had joins the learning group and finishes it, I'll buy you guys a domain name. But only yeah. Pat and Elliot finished it. Well, I guess, I guess only Pat really finished it, but Elliot got a certificate too. So I guess they both finished it. But Pat's the only one that did his, his uh, his uh, personal portfolio, like his website. So he's the only one that finished it, like like actually finished it. Right. I owe that's a freaking, I owe that man, <laughs> I owe that man a, a website, a domain name. He already got one. I only, th I only think he remembers. I remember though. Something's wrong with my um, free code camp. What's wrong with it? Are you still on Chrome? No, I'm on Mozilla and I'm trying to run the test and it's mm -hmm. like not even doing anything. Copy all the code and then refresh. Copy it so you don't lose it and have to do it over. I did that already. I opened another tab too. Let me just refresh it again. Ah, yeah, it's not working. Uh, and I reset it too. I don't know. Okay. Um, Hold yeah. on. Let's go. I think I did it. I think I fixed it. Okay. I'm going to share it real quick. To share it Okay, I'm gonna refresh it. I logged in. Right. And I'm clicking. And uh, do this. Um, <clears throat> huh? So right click on the where anywhere. You can right click anywhere. Uh, or I guess not. <laughs> go to the left hand side of the menu right. and then go to uh, yeah, there's inspect element, the second from the bottom. Uh, and then there should be to the console should be the second one and then hit run test. Oh yeah, that's where Where's run test? Uh, oh, no, sorry run hit the actual like button that says run test. Actually, you know what here um, the where that you have it. Yeah to the left of that. There's a trash can icon This when you hit that yeah, that'll click that Yeah, click on it That'll clear the console just so we know. And then go ahead and hit, actually hit the button that says run the test, the green one at the top, at the, on the actual website. On the actual green. website. Yeah. Show me. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. The one that you oh. were highlighting. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see. Yeah, I'm clicking it. Oh, that's why. There's a syntax error. Where? Um, OK, so X out of the, you can X out of the inspector. So do you see on the bottom corner it says six syntax error on unexpected uh -huh. token? Uh-huh. It's, oh, mm -hmm. that's why. So you, um, on line 16, you have two conditionals. So you have the triple, yeah, there you go. No, yeah, I had that, I had it that way too. And I just changed it just to see. Return. Um, change. Eight. What is Oh, that? it's at the bottom. Um, so none of the conditionals met, so it just hits, yeah, this is return outside of the function. Why is that? Wait, is it that? <laughs> yeah, it's that. <laughs> Mother trucker. Okay. You're good. Thank you. It was where I had. 
That's so weird. Then what was happening with this one? Hold on. I had another one that was doing the same thing. It was the one right before it. I mean, at least that's the one kind of cool thing about um, about free code camp, at least that bottom portion, that's the obviously the console. So if there's any errors, it automatically logs it out on there. So that's normally what I jump to. Just, you know. So this one, when uh, John was going through it earlier, <clears throat> everything matched his and it, his went through, but mine, I don't know why I didn't change and it. I was doing the same thing where I was running the tests and the button wasn't mm -hmm. really doing anything. And it, when I went back and it like cleared everything. So I'm gonna try this. Yeah, one. let's run it again. Let's see. That's why. It's else instead of the boss. Switch those conditions around. That's why you're getting this with the wrong thing there. Medium. Um, and else. Watch it work. No, because it oh. should be else. Yeah, else if instead of if else. <laughs> you have it backwards. Again, this will come with like literally just time. Like. So, are you going to Lambda? Who me? Mm -hmm. If I pass their challenge, I mean, I pretty much have everything. You're gonna pass the challenge, but like, are you gonna go? So you're still, you're gonna go? Uh huh. Are you are you doing the full time or the part time? Uh, the full time. I'm pretty much gonna fully focus on it. <laughs> I'm gonna I stop working. To get a job before you go. I think you should try to get a job. Like once we get done with this, I think you should just try to get a job because we're gonna have you build projects and stuff. So I think you should try to get a job before that. Before you go, I think you should like, like I want to go over with like everybody, like just trying to get a job. Cause like, these JavaScript skills, like it should be no problem, like getting you guys a job. No felonies, you guys have no, you guys have high school diplomas. No, you guys are set. You guys are doing this full time. Just a college dropout, that's all. Yeah, I'm just a college dropout. You made it to college, right? No, man. <laughs> I was a music major. I was hard. And all I did was dream jobs or Bill Gates or I think everybody's a, who was a college dropout. If you weren't a college dropout, you weren't living. <laughs> Everyone that has a college degree. <laughs> oh, who knows who that is? I mean, worst case, uh, worst case, Crystal. Like, let's say we're we're done in the month and you feel like a little better. You can always at least apply, like, start applying just to see what's up. Like, yeah. it, it's not gonna kill you. But, do you know Flexbox and Grid? But you can, but you can also like you know also work on Lambda as well. Yeah, I'm just. I know because the dude that we're uh, the dude that's doing that talk, um, Ben Johnson, um, he went. Um, I think he did Thinkful, which is still an online one. But he ended up. I think he was four months into his um, into his classes, and he ended up getting a job and just ended up. <laughs> I think he had to, I think he had to pay a pen like the, the sucky thing is, is I think he still had to end up paying a certain portion, but like you got a job because you're, right? you're gonna get a job regardless. Like if you, you want a job, so you're gonna get one. Well, 
it's like it's it's kind of like the law like the law of attraction kind of like i don't really go by that but it's kind of like you know the power of your mind you know it's like i want a beard <laughs> too high. what am i gonna do I'm yeah. not gonna shave. I'm gonna do everything in my power to get a beard. No, yeah. but to, honest, like at this mm -hmm. point, there's uh, maybe six, seven, seven, eight, eight. There's probably four assignments left, four or five that I still have to do uh, for Lambda. And then there's a three question challenge, and you have right. only 45 minutes each question to finish. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think they. You could only miss twice, yeah, or you you have to get it within at least a third time. But then you can right. apply it again, right? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> 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 it's just sucks. I, I mean, the good thing is is that the stuff we're going over is going to help you with that specific. Oh, yeah, because yeah. they're, they're, they're they're. I try to like just jump the gun and see if what. What I was getting myself into, and I, right. I have one more try. I feel like they're cheaters. It's like, hey, you can join my school, and I'll teach you what. No. But you already have to know what. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're 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 really. It's more of a. It's more of a like. Um, it's like a test to see if you're willing, like if you're dedicated to it, right? Like if you're willing to to learn some, like because the, the questions aren't like in comparison to what you're doing, like day to day in an actual job, are you know easy levels but like they're still uh, they're easy in the sense if you've been doing it for a couple of years but if you haven't if this is brand new then it, it is obviously like it feels hard it feels a lot harder than it have, than have it, you done the test uh the lambda one mm, oh. I, I did the hack reactor one and it is, it, is it free hmm? is it free to do the test yeah yeah well it's free to do the test but they you know then it's the process of going into you know, each meeting and then like them uh, trying to get yeah, you well, money. Should do the test just to <laughs> find out what it's like. Yeah, yeah. I think the I mean, is harder too. Yeah, it's it's one of the, well, I mean, because um, I, I was thinking about going to Hack Reactor and there's one out there called Codesmith um, that, that they are like, Codesmith is like, you want to become a, a mid-level engineer, they'll make you that in like six months. They're, they're not joking. Like the stuff you have to learn and the stuff you end up building is so much farther than like Hack Reactor or any others that I've ever, you know, experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they have really cool talks um, out yeah. in Venice. They record them on YouTube. I'm gonna uh, check them out. Yeah, but, it, but they go deep, like they're the ones that like, you're learning about the browser, how the browser engine works, and you're going deep into how JavaScript runs code. Um, so those ones like, you, you know, um, I, I learned and I felt appreciative of it, but just so it's also like their tuition is like seventeen thousand dollars so yeah it's only six thousand hack reactor yeah or no yeah. Than, uh, than lambda well no it's actually cheaper than lambda because lambda is actually like twenty two thousand isn't it it all depends on um so with lambda they don't collect anything up front if you make right if you make fifty thousand and you have a cap of two years paying back. It could range. If you keep a fifty thousand uh, dollar salary for two years, you're really only pay, paying like seventeen. But if you make more, they're pretty much going to take more from you. Right. So make a hundred. So either the, either the max is you pay thirty thousand, or you pay whatever the percentage is for two years. But your max will always be thirty. So I'm thinking like the ones that get those big jobs with big salaries, they take majority right. of, um, of their, their, their money or income. Right. Basically. Yeah. But I mean, they take, I mean, they cap it at like, I think like 10 or 15% of your, of your yearly, yearly salary. Yeah. Um, I think it's seven, but still like, yeah. Can you imagine if a developer was giving you like 10, could you imagine if at least like 50 developers were giving you like 10% or 50% of their income? For two years, bro, I'd be the happiest camper in the world. <laughs> you must just go around just smiling all day. Plus, I think the, also the good thing about those, like, like the boot camps now, because a lot of them closed down because, you know, obviously they had too many. 
And so now their emphasis is more on actually putting, um, uh, helping you out, like actually getting you a job. Like it, and the whole, that whole Lambda and Thinkful too, with them deferring your salary, like they're not going to get any money unless you get a good paying job. So yeah. it incentivizes them to do that as well. So that's always, you know, that, that doesn't hurt. That's a good thing though. Don't get me wrong. That's a great thing right there. I'm what, not, you guys what, talk- what do I put here real quick? I forgot. Oh, let me see. Um, it goes strokes and then return one. something in brackets. I, I forget. Oh, the name. So the top, that first line, the, the array names. So oh. name zero. And then oh. the next one will be one, two, three. And I think it goes up to six. Yeah, six. All right. So, okay, cool. There. Cool. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, dude, we didn't get off until like almost two o'clock yesterday. Bro, I two thought we got like four o'clock okay. yesterday. You were what, five o'clock? Uh, I'm three hours. You're in California. I'm three hours ahead of you. Yeah, so it was almost five for you. Yeah, I got off at like five last night. I was actually falling asleep. <laughs> like right when he said I'm about to go, I was like, oh, yeah, me too, bro. <laughs> like, I, I feel like he like saw me just like looking at the screen or something and like dozing for like, like a point second. And I was like, oh, gosh. That was so much fun. But now tonight, what we got to do is we actually got to do some work. Like, if we're going to do it. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> remember this one? Didn't Remember when I ran it and it went through? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is, I had a question on it and it wasn't saving. It didn't. I'm doing, I had to do it all over again. I went back to it and it didn't save. Mm. I, I don't know. You know what? It's probably because you didn't, um, I don't know. Maybe it's because you didn't go on to the next test. But once you, once you ran it and no. it, Oh sure? yeah, once it passes, it gets saved and yeah. like it, yeah. re- it reverts back to whatever. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, so I don't really need to do it. I mean, tech. I think if you see, if you look at your your curriculum, if it's already done, then then it's technically done, right? I understand. Oh shoot. Oh. Well, some... What happened, bro? Uh, I was trying to do a funky thing with the... It's a little high level. Um, I think I fixed it, though. Because it's basically trying to use reduce on this one this node list, and it's a node list and not an array, so that's no problem. Let's see if it works. Can't hurt, right? I don't know. It's not like that big of a deal. I can just do a for loop like a normal human being. Let's see. With this one for the last part, uh, the go home. Um, yeah. Do does the last one have to be else, or does it, it have to be else if it doesn't have to only be else towards the end? It's a coding standard that else is the last thing, right? Because you're these else. So so look at it like this. Like let's say you have um, the number. I guess you know it's oh, right? if so it's literally out yeah. of this. Because every time, so if it runs, if it's 50, it'll run in and say strokes equals one. That's false. So it's not going to run whatever's in there. So it literally is going to go chain down. And so normally you want that else at the bottom. Um, that way, obviously, like it doesn't continue. Like it, at some point it's going to go like, oh, wait, no. Got so, it. Okay. So yeah, like it's going to be if and then all the else ifs and then it should be else at the, as the last one. Uh, switch statements, which are. Uh, is that always? 
Um, yeah, yeah. Well, again, like, so that way you're not in a loop, like, so that way it actually does something. Um, cause if you don't have that else, then nothing's going to happen. Right. Like unless you have code below it. Yeah. So you'll normally, yeah, the it'll go if else, if, and then else as always. And then you'll see some people write code where it's just a bunch of if statements, which is okay. Like, what, what, what's the difference with the if, and if you have a bunch of if statements? So if, so if you have, if you have a bunch of if statements, it's literally like, instead of it going down the line, it's, it's, if you have if and else if, it's going to like, it's, it's doing it like once, right? Like, so it has if, else if, and then um, keeps going down the line. If you have a bunch of if statements, you're creating a new like context. So it's literally like, it's slowing it down because it's literally checking if, 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 and it's not oh. like, it's not as fast as going like if to else if, because that one's like connected. They're not connected. So yeah. it's fine. Like if you're doing it like two or three times, it's completely different when you're doing it like three or 400 times, then you'll notice that there's, <laughs> it's not great. You'll notice the speed will go down. Where are you, where are you at, John? Um, I am on the same one you're on. Okay. Ah, dope, I did it. Hell yeah, huh? all right. This one? I'm so confused. Bar answer equals. Um, many options to choose from this switch statement. Right, so that's my number. This one. That's the number guessing game. So oh, it's man, written, I um, like pulled <laughs> because I had to go like in and out. Yeah. I, I, I got lost. So I wrote it with, so I wrote it in ES6. So I have arrow functions in it and then um, added a bunch of like more modern code. And then, so instead of like the, so there's a way to do it in there. So all those, um, there's like style dot, you know, color equals whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not it's not the best practice. The best practice would be to like create a class in CSS and basically add it. Um, but then you run into issues with that. Like you have to be aware of because sometimes, like if you add too many classes that do too many things, then um, you run into something called specificity, which is weird with CSS in general. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that way. I want to see how this works. To have okay. Well, I have. I should probably should have checked if it what happens when it says game over because I don't think I set conditions for that. Twenty-five. Woo! Gotty. Okay. Yeah, again, she beat me twice. Huh? Please. Actually, I wonder I can add, you know what I can add to that? I can add a number counter in there. Let me do that. I'm going to have fun with that. If you have many options from this CSS, which is a bad design, can have many different ones. Let guess count equal one. Oh, what's going on with this one? Let me see. Uh, all right. Uh, basis is lifting from any options of switch statements. Okay. So <sighs> switches are weird, right? Like they're they're like if else statements, but they have this. Um, you have to be aware of, of, of this thing that happens with it, right? 
So if else, right? So if you if if you find an if statement and that like matches, then it does the thing, right? Um, switch statements are different because you have to add uh, something called break keyword because mm -hmm. it doesn't know. Like if if it if you didn't put the break keyword, it's just going to literally like run through the conditions, um, which is dumb. But uh, so let's see. Is your game, dude? I'm gonna check this out. Excuse me, sorry. Yeah. There's a code uh, version of it on there too. Like there's an editor so you can see all the code that was written in it. Um, I just gave you the full page because I probably should have done it in full view or editor view. Can we just. Um... We could just go to your page and look. Sure. Oh, this is nice, bro. You added some CSS to it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm. I'm. <laughs> once I learned how to center everything in Flexbox, I've never like never used margin or anything because because <laughs> uh, you know Flexbox is cool because it automatically knows, yeah. but not every browser does it. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Flexbox is definitely the ish. The ish. I like flex. I like flex and grid, bro. They complement each other. Very nice. Yeah, that's the cool thing about grid. Yeah, and, and and it seems like it's using more in the browser. So grid will be nice to add to more stuff. But I think I might add a, a guest counter on top of that. You changed something too, where it's not showing all the numbers that you previously guessed. It's just showing one. Yeah, that's what that's what I was gonna. Um, I think I might add it like as an array. I think I might do that because I realized that that you need to do a counter or just set it up as an array, and I think I might just throw it on there. But if you go up to the top right where it says change view, you can go to the editor, uh, editor view. I think. Code pen, you're ridiculous. So, yeah, so it has it broken out. So, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What and is then it? I changed it to that. Oh, okay. I, I was wondering what so that way, Yeah, that way you can run ES6 because that's why, like, constant let are technically, I guess, they're allowed in Chrome. It's ES6, but, though. Yeah. So, all those functions became arrow functions. So, they became a, you put a const and then just equals. And so rather than write the word function, you can just do like that little parentheses and an arrow with a less than symbol and it becomes a function. It still runs. It's basically the same thing as saying function. It's just. Wait, where, 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 where do you have that under on your page? What do you mean? Um, this, the simple guessing game. Is it yeah. under your pens? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, I did little stuff like, so I, I added a button. So the buttons already made rather than making it in JavaScript, you just hide it with CSS and then it just pops out once something happens, the game's over, you win. Just little things. All right, let's see. I want to fix that. Let me fix that JavaScript. Can't do this shit. What is going on here? I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I really don't know. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see. So if take that bottom curly bracket out. Uh, oh. Return me. Oh yeah. I think that's what I did too. Mm -mm. Still not working. Um. Check the. What does it say? Oh, that's why. Oh, your else. Yeah. So you're going to have to remove that um, strokes. The whole um, entire parentheses. It's, it's just oh, going to really? say else. They're gonna, yeah. Oh, man. So I remember, did that last time, too. Yeah. So remember, else is just going to be else. 
So it's just going to assume everything else is going to do that, right? Oh, gosh. I feel so silly. No, man. Like, again, like, it's all this is, like, syntax, right? Like, all this is, like, as if you were, you know, writing down Spanish or French or whatever. I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> like, I can finally stop recording. Like, I didn't want to look dumb and just sit here on, like, 30 minutes on this and, like, not get it done. Like, not get it. Get it done.